out here taking an eye strain break in the garden. It is May 12th. Look at how big these peaches are already. This tree is just loaded. This is the one that I pruned very heavily. I'll show you here in a minute. And literally as high up as you can see. There used to be, I was started to grow these more like a bush and then when I got cancer they kind of got out of control over the next couple of years. So what I did was this one here actually had four branches and I had reduced it down to two. So I left two of them full size and got rid of two of them. And the two I left are just loaded with peaches. And that, that one over there had two massive limbs and I got rid of one of them and only left one. And then I plan to come back this year. Right there is kind of like the growth they got over the last two years. You can kind of see where that area is right there is basically how much they've grown in two years both of them are going to be like that toward the top where it branches out that's all two years growth anyways i cut them back and of course that signaled them to send up new shoots and also some lower growth so the plan is i would let this lower growth grow this year, chop these back down to a manageable height, and then I'll still have peaches next year on this lower growth. So it's gonna take multiple years to get the problem resolved that I had from just not being able to take care of the fruit trees while I had cancer. And uh, over here are actually the limbs that I cut down. You can see I, I went pretty heavy on them. And then uh, that'll take care of them. These all got damaged by the deer and I had to heavily prune them also. But I left one just in case that it, uh, that I killed the other ones. And I mean, they're doing great. And there were only a couple down here that got ruined by the deer or got damaged by the deer. None of them really got ruined. It just basically broke the tops out of them. You can kind of see the tops broken out of that one. Little stub stem there in the center. Same way with that one over there. Same way with that one back there. Um, this right here though is two pears and two apples. This is four plums. This next one is three peaches. The next one is four apples. This right here is raspberry, and then I've got gooseberries, two gooseberries and two uh, cherries in this one. And the cherries are doing, seem to be doing pretty good this year too. You can see a uh, few, you can tell where all the blooms are at, but there's already a few fruits starting to form. Some more fruit right there. So they're small trees, but they actually produce a lot. And then I have the four elderberry. And then I have a whole row of blackberries here, 65 feet long. And then in the center, I have my herb garden spiral herb garden and then my apiary and there's a couple more fruit trees up there then outside of this orchard area i've got some more fruit trees the deer i think i thought the deer ruined this one i actually think that the main tree died because it never did anything basically the deer come along and either ate or broke every branch off as high up as they could reach because I don't have this surrounded by anything to protect them. But it did send up a new shoot. And I also have Bocking 14 Comfrey growing in all these outer boxes.
more Bocking 14 Comfrey. It's actually a pretty flower when it's in flower. Um, this right here was a crab apple that died. The deer broke it off. It basically died. More Bocking Comfrey 14. Another crab apple, which also I thought died, but look right there. It shot up some new shoots and it looks like it's going to recover. Then the deer ruined these were um, persimmons. They uprooted them. More Bocking 14 Comfrey. But they uprooted this one. More Bocking 14 Comfrey. They didn't up they didn't uproot this one. Oh, I do see a little bit of sign of growth down here now. So you can see down there in the fork of that branch, there's two little red dots. And that is new growth. So might have got lucky on this one. Then up here was the uh, fig tree that I did a video on last year. Basically, I could show you that you didn't have to do anything, just cut a limb off a fig tree and stick it in the ground and it would grow. It was alive last year in the fall and had rooted. And none of my figs have even really started to grow this year. So kind of too early for it to tell yet. But another thing I wanted to show you was I have two more persimmons in here and one is showing signs of growth and this one's not and the deer you can kind of see there there's a top of it's broke off the deer got in here i i left that gate open the deer got in here i don't know if it's going to come back or not this one over here though the deer shoved over but it has some green growth on it. So I might get lucky with this one. And uh, these two varieties here were actually the same variety. So I'm kind of thinking that one up there is probably done for. But I'm going to go ahead and let it grow. And then I also did a video about um, Mother Nature. We, d we can't really control Mother Nature, and I kind of want to give an update because I found something else. So the thing was, I built this area for the blackberries. You know, planted all these blackberries in here, put up fence, wide enough for them to grow. And the hopes was that this would all fill out with blackberries over the years, right? And basically what I'm finding is they're basically growing outside of the fence. That right there is a blackberry growing outside the fence. That's a blackberry growing outside the fence. You can basically walk all the way down through here and see blackberry just coming up. That's blackberry. That's blackberry. That's blackberry. Some of these are pretty good ways away from the fence, too. That's blackberry. Oh, that's one of the uh, thornless ones, too. So that's okay. That means, oh, that's also thornless. At least so far, that's blackberry. It's that one there is a good three feet from the fence. But the joke was, you know, when I designed this blackberry bed, I, I don't know for some reason I thought they would stay within the fence, and they obviously are not. <laughs> and this actually started last year. Um, there's blackberry right there. There's one of last year's stems still sticking up. I saw some more blackberry in other places. But the elderberry kind of does the same thing. See, there's a shoot there, but over there is the main plant. This one here is like bushed out all the way around the edges, but so far at least they're staying in the grow bed. <laughs> like, I don't know why. Why do we feel like that we can control Mother Nature? Right there's a stem broke off. I don't know how that happened. But the reason why I'm bringing that up, I want to show you something else. Cherry. There's actually a bloom still left on there and a couple of fruits forming. This cherry has been off to a slow start, but it is showing some green growth. But up here are these uh, raspberries. 
bushel and berry and it kind of like the same deal you know you plant a bed it's a raised bed you think that the berries are just going to magically stay inside of it but look at this that's a good two and a half three feet away from this bed and i've seen several others popping up also outside the bed i mean i don't really mind <laughs> there's more right there outside the bed there's some down there outside the bed there was uh, some over here outside the bed. Some right there outside the bed. But anyways, that's kind of like the thing. There's some right there. I don't know if I showed that one or not. That's kind of like what I was like laughing about. Like we create all of these garden spaces and we try to... Uh, make the plants do what we want them to do but you know at the end of the day mother nature takes over and we just got to do whatever mother nature wants i'm okay with these raspberries growing outside the beds i'm okay with the blackberries growing outside the beds i'm even okay with the gooseberries if they decide they want to grow out the beds or the elderberries because that's just more fruit you just got to be more careful like so originally i intended to build this um spiral herb garden and then i was going to do like i do all my other places i would put down uh cloth to restrict the weed growth and then i would put uh, wood chips on top of it but now that I have plants growing outside of their beds and outside their fenced-in areas, I'm not going to be able to do that. So it'll just be harder for me to control. I did some work on the beehives earlier today. Added another box. This seems like it's going to be a really good year for honey, as long as it's good honey and not mountain laurel or something like that. Um... What else been going on on the homestead? Ah, oh, I know. My ATV broke down. I used the ATV to maintain the driveway, which is a mile long. It broke down. Fuel pump went out of it. That happened about two weeks ago. I finally got the fuel pump in, but all of this plastic has to come off of it in order to get to the fuel pump, which is where the tank's at. And I just haven't had time to get started on it yet. And then, Monday, my ride mower blew up. And I've already started a video on it. Um, this Poland Pro mower, though, has been nothing but problems from day one. <laughs> like, literally. And it's not been really... I, I should say this. It's not really been the mower itself. It's been the engine. Every single time, something happens to the engine. Like, every year, something major. Um, I've had to replace both cylinder heads and I've had to put numerous sets of valve stems in it or I'm sorry, uh, push rods. I've had to put numerous sets of push rods in it due to a manufacturing design flaw, which they corrected, which is why I had to replace the cylinder heads and I did all the work myself. Um, that seemed like that fixed that problem, but the new problem, when this originally broke down on Monday, I thought it was the same deal. I thought it, I thought one of the valve stem seals dropped down and bent the push rods, but no. It's either got a busted crankshaft or broken push rods. So, I got to take the engine off of that. It's supposed to rain this weekend. going to be nice all week and then rain this weekend. It seems like that's a Kentucky spring weather. Did you come over to visit? Huh? Did you come over to visit? Come on. That's my escape bunny. So I had the rabbit hutch. And he don't like the rabbit hutch. He found out that if he kicks the door, he can get out. So even if I caught him right now, suck him in the rabbit hutch, in a few hours, he'd be out again. So last year, I just decided to leave him out. 
And uh, the funny thing about it was, I may have already done a video on this, but the funny thing about it was, is that when he first got out for like two or three months after he got out, every time I'd even walk near him, he'd just run off. But now he'll actually come up to me and let me pet him and all kinds of stuff because I'm not trying to capture him and stick him back in a rabbit hutch. And to be honest with you, I am surprised he's lived this long because I thought for sure a coyote or something would get him. But here he is. He's been out now for about a year and made it through winter just fine. I would see him, you know, throughout the winter out, you know, when the weather wasn't like below freezing and stuff. I'd see him out feeding on grass and uh, I'm just amazed he's doing so well. Now he does still like to get about once a week. I give him a treat of a rabbit. Matter of fact, I'll do that now. I might have might have been several days ago. I did it last, but I've still got like the rabbit hutch and all the equipment back here, and I still have food for him. He just prefers to eat grass and stuff. So, but about once a week, I'll give him like a handful of this rabbit feed, and. uh when he was running up to me, I actually thought that's what he wanted, like rabbit feet. We'll see if I can get him. Oh, he look like he already suspects it. You want some feed? Huh? Come on. Come on. Look. You want some feed? Come on. You want some feed? Don't bite my fingers. Come on. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else too. Ever since I've let him out. So he, when he was in the rabbit hutch, he used to get ear mites all the time. Like I'd have to treat him probably every two or three months for ear mite infections. He has not had an ear mite infection as long as he's been running around in the wild. So I don't know. It's kind of changed like my whole way of keeping rabbits. Um, I just let him run around and he does just fine <laughs> craziest thing ever anyways that's really all this is kind of like a quick homestead update just everything that's been going on lately uh, the grapes are starting to take off I didn't touch on that but I just saw them up there starting to take off the new grape plant that I planted last year is doing pretty good I still have a whole bunch of plants up there to plant that I didn't get to the last two years from cancer. A couple of those are grapes. I see them starting to bloom out or try, starting to leaf out. And uh, there's some more gooseberries up there that have now been in pots for like three years that are just thriving. It's crazy how well they're doing. That was kind of a science experiment. I have them right next to a white pine tree. And uh, supposedly you're not supposed to plant gooseberry next to white pine tree, but these are thriving. They were in bloom. I see all the blooms are gone now, which means that fruit will be forming any time. And then I have a uh, hazelnut right there that needs planted. A couple of these died. That right there was another... Uh, no sense to me. There's some one of the grapes I got to get planted. There's another one right there that's getting ready to leaf out. I got to get planted yet. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. If you're into this kind of stuff, I just put out some videos. You can kind of see way over there is an elder tree. And I kind of showed the difference of like an elder tree versus elderberry. Both have edible fruit, but um, if 
you like this kind of content, homesteading, raising your own food, I try to raise, grow, forage, hunt, 80% of all the food I eat, hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.